if you do strength training and you do contrast therapy closely together, and this is, you know, to be determined research because I want to do it. I'm going to do original research on this. What I have found is that, first off, the benefits for weight loss for individuals who that is their goal, doing this is the most efficient thing that I have ever found. How so? <laughs> Again, the research has to be done. I have to now do it. But what I have found is that doing contrast therapy finishes off the workout and active because when you get into the ice tub specifically, I mean, your metabolic rate, when your heart Absolutely. gets going and, and you are, I am teaching you the breathing techniques. We are going through the meditational process. We are doing everything we can to keep your sympathetic nervous system down, which is hard enough coming off a hit workout, mm -hmm. but you're getting into the ice and now you're at a place where, oh, your body is, it, it's the, you know, you're overheating with the workout. You're chilling in the ice and then you're heating again in the sauna doing that. And again, I, I, I need to do the research. I'm so excited to do it, but I have found my clients who have all like weight loss has been their thing. Since I started doing that, it's changed everything. And for injuries, the removal of inflammation, the toxins from the joints, the ligaments, the tendons, that, that would, you know, the cold is powerful. I can absolutely get behind you on that. Um, because whenever I have little nagging things or whatever, <clears throat> I'll step into my cold plunge at home. Yeah. Literally, I'll do it for one minute or two minutes. I get out of it. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes later, when I'm, well, a few hours later, I'm warmed up. I just feel much better. Joints feel much better. It's, yeah. it's wild. How many times do people go back and forth? So that's a very good question. I have found it, it varies based on the individual. Some people like five, five, five. Uh, my personal favorite, I like 10 minutes cold, 10 minutes hot. I like straight up. How cold is 10 minutes? It's 34 to 37 degrees. That's what our water stays at. Now, that's my model. And my model's a little extreme. I, I, that's just me. I, I, I like it. I like the mental fortitude that you build by doing that as much as the physical. And yeah. we could talk about that for an hour, just the mental benefits of being able to enter that environment and overcome it. Mm -hmm. It's a, I, I mean, people with anxiety, depression, insomnia, people, I've had cops with PTSD who have done this with me. And I'm really? like, hey man, look, I have this idea in my head that I think this might help you. We need to try this out and just kind of do what I say and tell me if this helps you. It, They've sworn by it. It, it. it The mental stuff on that is as powerful as the physical, in my opinion, from what I have found. But getting in that for 10 minutes means you have conquered the breathing, meditation, and the cold. You, you have overcome that. And what I will do is now I'm at a place, I actually lead classes through TikTok on our live platform while I'm in there. Yeah. So I'll talk mm -hmm. through like, all right, y'all, you know, this is going to, the cold is not constant. It's going to come in waves. This is the first wave, about three minutes. And then I'm going to start to cool out, start to get numb. I'll feel all right. And then the second wave will hit me. And that is something that if you ever go 10 minutes and 10 minutes, what you want is what I like to call aftershock. See, after you do the cold, your body is going to naturally want to get back to mm. your normal body temperature. And it's going to do that through vasodilation, pushing mm. the blood back to your extremities after it left. It's painful. I've seen grown men cry. Mm. It is a, it is an overwhelming, it can be an overwhelming process. Painful in what way? Like your skin is, uh, you know, feeling uh, weird or is it like painful mentally more than anything else? Very hard to describe. Is it, phys is it it's physical? A oh, it's physical. Okay. It's also, it's weirdly emotional too. Yeah. You, and, and for me, I've done it enough to where I, you know, it's like clockwork. It's fine. I, I don't get it. I don't get any stress or anxiety about it at mm -hmm. all because I understand the worst part of the whole ice bath is that 60 seconds before I get in. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it. My mind, I'm getting, I'm getting myself, you know, kind of ready and I'm getting myself kind of kind of amped up. You just yeah. naturally, there's nothing you can do. Your heart's already elevated just looking at the water. But um, what I have found is that, uh, I'm sorry, what was your question again? I lost, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I was just saying like, uh, what kind of pain? Uh, pain, physical yeah. or mental, yes. Um, physical is certainly the more of a, not so much your skin because mm. you're kind of numb, mm. but as that circulation starts to happen and and- <laughs> <laughs> it is a I understand that makes sense yeah it, it's just it's overwhelming you feel you feel very first of all you are convulsing most likely you, you are you're you've been in the in the cold for that long you're shivering naturally yeah, yeah. once you get out the way I describe it it's like getting into the cold again because your body, when you first get in, that first three minutes is by far the most difficult. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients if you can make it past three minutes, you can get to 10 minutes no problem mm -hmm. you're there I gotta try that. But if you go in and you do 10 minutes, then you get out. First minute or so out of the cold, you're fine. You're numb. You don't feel anything. As you start to recirculate and get your body back to normal temperature, 
you start to feel like that first three minutes mm. all over again. Because your body doesn't quite get, am I cold, am I hot? And then you add the sauna in there as well. Now, the sauna is actually kind of a Band-Aid. It's beneficial for me and our process because our clients, I mean, a turnaround time for our sessions is about 70 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's not, I mean, that's a decent amount of time. You got phase one training and then contrast therapy, which is about 25 minutes if they do 10 and 10. The sauna is there to kind of get you, because most people wouldn't be able to operate their car. If you got into that ice bath for yeah. 10 minutes and you just got out and tried to leave, you would probably crash your car. Like, mm -hmm. it's probably mm -hmm. not safe. Shaking. Oh, I, I've had to do it one time. One time I forgot to turn the sauna on mm -hmm. and then I had to go. And I was like in my car, just like, but uh, the sauna helps kind of reset you. You don't, you won't even sweat. 220 degrees after the ice bath, you will not sweat. You'll get in there, you'll yeah. feel right, and you'll leave. Power Project family, how's it going? I hope you guys are enjoying the episode. And I want to tell you, sometimes when you're a lifter, you need certain pieces of equipment that's going to help you perform a little better in the gym. Just like the hip circle is going to help warm up your hips, knee sleeves are going to keep your knees warm when you're squatting. The slingshot's going to help you bench a little bit more. But the cool thing is that Mark made all of this equipment when he was in the middle of his powerlifting career because he wanted equipment that could help him perform better, as it can also help you perform better. The cool thing is that all this equipment was made for lifters by lifters. Andrew, could you tell them how to get it? Yes, that's over at markbellslingshot.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10% off your entire order. Uh, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. I've done that before. The, uh, this place has a cold and hot, but I was curious. Um, number one, do you have these people take electrolytes? Because obviously they're sweating a lot after, <laughs> while they're in the sauna. But secondly, have you ever had the sensation of like airheadedness or lightheadedness when you're doing contrast therapy. What happens sometimes is I'll go into the sauna for whatever. I'll get out, I'll go to the cold plunge. And when I get out of there, it's almost like I want to faint. Like, like literally, I feel like hmm, I just may pass out. Not Oof. because of like mm. I've sweated or anything, but I just feel like a lot of air, like airiness in my head. Oh yeah, I'm good, but it feels unsafe. When so you when you when you feel this, is it immediately when you get in, or is it when you when when do you feel this sensation? Some okay, so like it, it, it's random sometimes. So I'll do the sauna. I'll get out. I'll go into the cold plunge. So you're starting with the sauna. Yeah, no. Sometimes I start with the cold plunge and sauna, but like when I, I remember the last time when I did the sauna, came out, and then I went to the cold plunge oh, around yeah. three or four minutes while I was in the cold plunge. I was like, I was looking at my heart rate; it was really <laughs> low, and I was just like, "Stay here, and Siba, stay here, oh, yeah. stay where, right?" And I was like, "Hmm, this is weird." Yes. Do you know what? Do you know I what know I'm talking about? Exactly what you're talking okay, about. What, you know what the fuck's happening? I honestly don't. <laughs> I honestly don't. And, and you know why? I honestly, I did it a couple times. I used to go cold, hot, cold, hot. And yeah. I did what you did yeah. where I would go in the sauna. You'll get myself because you're, again, your heart is so, so low, beating so slowly because you're in the, you're meditating in the sauna. You're so hot. You're overheated. Then you get out. Then you get into the ice and you don't even really feel it. You, you, you like get in and you just like, I started to, I remember one time I did it at night mm -hmm. and my tub is outside. So I'm looking up. The stars were going. Ooh. Yeah, like rolling. I'm like, okay, this. I'm I'm fine, but I'm not about to let my clients do this in the back, like uh -huh. while I'm working with the next person. No way. Yeah. So I don't I don't uh, I don't do hot to cold. I only let my clients do cold to hot. Okay, because of that exact reason. You're right. I, I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but yeah. something happens when you go hot to, to cold, cold as opposed to cold to hot. 